This is a replay in the background, by the way. So if you see both my hands at some point, it's not like some weird conspiracy. It's, it's just a replay. <laughs> um, today I wanted to talk about uh, offline and like playing offline again. I'm going to be going back to my parents' house soon, and I'm going to be going to some offline events while I'm there. It's only going to be for a week, but uh, there's two events that I know are going on down in Houston, so I'll, I'll probably be there. But I realized that during COVID, a lot of people started picking up these games and probably have not played offline yet. Mostly people who played Guilty Gear Strive because it's a new game and, and I know a lot of people came from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, but I mean, hopefully it'll give Street Fighter V a try while you're there. But um, I know there's a lot of new people who are gonna be going offline for the first time. So I wanted to kind of talk about what you can expect and how I sort of like train online um, before I show up. When you start playing offline, remember it doesn't matter how good or how bad you are at the game. You know, you're there to learn ultimately, and when you start to get better, you're there to win. But when you first start showing up, play some casuals. Play a lot of casuals, actually, and learn how the game plays offline compared to online. The, the way the game plays online to offline for games like Guilty Gear, where the netcode is pretty good, might not feel as drastic as Street Fighter V. Like, the game almost feels uh, a lot different. If you play PS4 Street Fighter V, for example, and then you go play offline, it feels like a different game. If you play PC, um, it, it's not as big of a transition. To, for me, like personally, the hardware doesn't matter too much, but I know at the highest level and the people who are really competing in these games, it does. You know, like a lot of people say that the PS4 Pro plays Guilty Gear Strive leaps and bounds better than the normal PS4, which I, I have no way to gauge that because I haven't played it. <laughs> but um, just the little things like that, getting used to little changes like that. Uh, and getting used to actually playing sitting next to somebody can be uh, a real change. It can feel a lot different than you're used to. You'll notice little things about that, like when you're, you're playing right next to somebody, like how you see the monitor from a different angle and things like that, and how far you want to sit from the monitor. There's that famous clip at Tokido with the, the tape measure. All that stuff is, is like kind of real to an extent, you know, it, it takes some getting used to. Uh, but all in all, it, it's just a very fun experience. Even if you don't enter the tournament, maybe you show up and you're like, wow, I don't want to spend $10 to be a pop monster. Uh, I just want to pay the venue and then play casuals, which is different for every tournament you go to, right? Some tournaments will have uh, a venue fee and a tournament fee. Some of them will just have a venue fee if there's just casuals. Uh, it depends where you're going. It depends what they're doing in your area. Um, but it, it's always a, a good time. It's always a good time to get out, even if you, you go and Like for me, for example, when I started playing, I, I, that was like my first time playing Street Fighter V was when I played offline. And... Uh, I got like ran through, you know, like just completely destroyed. And, I, and then after that, I kept showing up. Like I showed up to the next, I think nine or 10 locals before I moved and I didn't win a single match. But every time I learned something, and every time I would go and play casuals and play against these really strong players who would teach me a lot, I would come home and I would rank up online. Like I, I'd go from silver to gold within like a few days because it, it very much expedites uh, a lot of the things that you would have to learn yourself. Like a lot of hard lessons that they have learned already and gone through the struggle, they can just teach you in a few minutes. So it, it very much expedites your learning. Another thing that uh, happened with me was that I, I went to so many locals, even though I wasn't placing or anything, uh, I started to recognize some faces and talking to people. And a lot of the times, like, uh, groups in your area have, like, a Discord or a Facebook group. So make sure you join those because that's where most of the events get posted and a lot of people set up, even playing online. Because uh, especially in a game like Street Fighter V, finding people who you can play with online in your area is important because the netcode is just not... Uh, the greatest but if you can play somebody in your area code it's not too terrible the biggest thing i can say is i know a lot of people feel like they need to uh be like a certain rank or a certain level of player before they show up to these offline events but just that's that's like a big misconception to me it's quite the opposite right don't feel like you need to grind online and get a certain rank and then be this certain caliber of player before you show up just show up and, and learn and be uh open to learning right just Take what they say and, and implement it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work for you. But if it does, keep doing it. For me, honestly, it's probably one of the only reasons I continue to play fighting games was the social aspect, right? Showing up offline and showing everybody like what you learned that week, even though it, they've already pretty much learned it, is really exciting. And, and like doing a little bit better every single time you show up or every time you play against uh, your friends it is always a good feeling. So that's what sort of kept me going for a while. Uh, and I'm very excited to be able to go back and play offline with them. Um, around thanksgiving time when i go back as far as uh you know training for offline uh, i say training in quotations training i just mean like practicing and getting ready to uh play in a bracket uh mostly what i've been doing lately is playing a lot of colleen because that's a character i think i'm gonna play when i go offline um you guys know i started with with karen so i started playing um 
Karen whenever uh, I was in like bronze or whatever. I think it was like rookie or bronze, and that's when I picked her up and played her all the way to diamond. But uh, she got a, she got kind of boring once I hit diamond, as well as the fact that she's very hard to play in an online environment. And the reason for that is she's a very hit confirm heavy character, and her hit confirm goes into a move that's like minus ten on block. So one, if the hit confirm rolls back and you just like go for it and when i say roll back usually in this game you'll either hear a hit or you'll see a hit spark and then it'll roll back to a block but i'm already in motion to put the tenko in the minus 10 move so they just block the minus 10 and i lose like minus 10 in this game is pretty significant so they, they will do like a pretty large punish and then you're screwed and it's very annoying it happens more often than you think like more often than it should ever happen it, it happens and it's very annoying to play with as well as the fact that I think Colleen sort of does Karen's job, but just a lot slower, which is usually a bad thing. But for me, I feel like it's a little better. Her buttons are bigger, but she's slower. Uh, but that works better for me because I'm just not used to playing as fast. Like, I, I like playing patient. I like playing slower. The only thing I will say is annoying playing Colleen is against fireball characters like Sagat, Guile, uh, Falk, like zoner characters. She very much does not have a good option against fireballs you sort of just have to walk and block or uh neutral jump the fireball and sort of fish for a back roundhouse crush counter and that that's kind of how you have to get around it it's it's not uh there's not a one size fits all option for getting around fireballs in her like there is on karen where you can just like shoulder charge through it or even on cami where you can like um ex spiral arrow or ex flip kick on jury there's those are three answers to fireballs that colleen just doesn't have but she makes up for it with her like super good normals and her V trigger is really good. And it's two bars now, so you get uh, you can sometimes get it twice. And it's a very powerful V trigger. She she does a lot of damage, a lot of stun, and she has more health than most of the characters that I play. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. That's what I'll be up to for probably the next week or so. Um, and you'll probably be seeing gameplays of Colleen instead of Jury for now. I don't know if I'll pick... I might pick Jury back up when I come back from the holidays, but uh, who knows? I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't even know what I'm going to do tomorrow, so let alone a week from now. <laughs> and I'll try and get some footage for you guys, either like in person, probably on my phone. I, I don't think I'm going to bring the big camera to the event, uh, but I'll probably record some stuff on my phone, try and record my matches on my phone if I can. If not, we'll just pull it from the VOD. If I play on stream, I'll just pull it from the VOD and we can take a look from there. Uh, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this one, consider subscribing uh, and I'll talk to you again soon.